up guys, Derek Moss here, Christmas day. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how to start like Caleb Dressel. One of the first things you'll notice when you see a Caleb Dressel start is that his arms will actually fly over his shoulders. Watch how the arms stay very slightly bent at the elbow while completely following through around the shoulders. All right, so the reason Dressel does this flyover start, you gotta think of an analogy using baseball. So if you're a pitcher, and you're throwing the ball and you do this, you stop there and come back, you're not gonna have nearly as much power on the pitch as if you fully follow through. So that's like a lot of swimmers, when they do their start, they pull back and then go into the stream line from there. But you don't get nearly as much power as if you pull back and go straight through all around and then into the stream line. So that's what Dressel does and he's kind of made it famous in the last couple of years. In this video from Dressel's Instagram, you can see very clearly that his arms will swing over his shoulders in a slightly bent position. I want you to watch here just how much pull Dressel gets out of his arms. He lands almost at the flags and pops up about half a body length in front of his competitors. Michael Phelps, on the other hand, uses the older start technique and doesn't get nearly as much power out of his arms. Go! Now Phelps will still come out of the water ahead because of his outstanding dolphin kicks, but you can see he doesn't get nearly as far off the blocks as Dressel does. Ooh, that was so when learning the flyover technique, a lot of people struggle with keeping their hands together upon entry. I'll show you a couple drills that can help you increase your stability on the blocks along with your leg explosiveness, but they'll also help you keep your hands together when you enter the water. This first drill will make you more stable on the block, which is key to changing anything about your start. An added bonus is that it can help increase your leg explosiveness. Drill 2 will help familiarize yourself with the arm motion as it can be challenging to learn. Remember to keep that tight streamline when you enter the water. Once you've mastered both drills, you can put it all together into a full start. So the next thing I'll talk about is head position. I actually had a meeting with Caleb Dressel's coach, Greg Troy, a couple weeks after Caleb Dressel won a 17.6 in the 50 free. One thing they'd been working on with the start his whole college career was to keep his head in line with its spot instead of lifting his head up on a start. The reason why you don't want to lift your head up on your start is because that takes away momentum. You want to be going completely forward and if you lift your head up, it takes away from your forward momentum. I'll show a couple clips, one from high school, one from college, and one from his professional career. And you can see that in high school, Dressel would lift up his head a ton. In college, he would start to lift his head up a little less. And now, he barely lifts his head up at all, and it's almost perfect. So here's Dressel from high school, and you can see him lift his head up a lot. What's interesting about this race is he's actually next to Joseph Schooling. Even in high school, Dressel's start was very good, but definitely not quite as good as it is now. I'll slow down each of these clips even further so you can really see how far Dressel lifts up his head. This one is from Dressel's senior year in college, and it's a little tough to see in the second clip, but he's definitely improved his head position a little bit from high school. Now Dressel still takes a little peek up at the pool, but he's almost perfect. Greg Troy is probably still working with him on this part of the start. Here I'll show you guys a little bit of the elbow position, and the reason why Dressel will pull his elbows back a little bit instead of having his elbows pointed out like a lot of swimmers do. What this does is you lose a bit of time when you're going to do the start. You have to bring the elbows back before you can do the start. But if you have the elbows back when you start, you can go right into the pool from there. Here, Michael Phelps uses the wrong elbow position and this significantly slows down his reaction time. Dressel, on the other hand, has his elbows pointed slightly back towards him and he can go right into the start.
Unsurprisingly, the starting position is very important to having a good start. Your thumbs should be curled over the edge so they can pull you forward, but they should not be used for stability, which a lot of young swimmers do. If you still struggle with stability, go back to those drills I showed at the beginning. Your back should be tight like a compressed spring ready to explode. If it's too loose, you'll lose time tightening up on the block. You'll get most of the power from your legs out of the back leg, and this should be exactly 90 degrees where it has the most power. Dressel can get such a fast reaction time because instead of being behind the block, his shoulders are slightly in front of the block. So the next thing I'll talk about is Dressel's entry position. He uses a pike position. This is because when he hits the water, the top half of his body will shift up a little bit, but the bottom half will stay the same. So he'll end up entering in a straight line. But if he were to start out as a straight line, his top half would lift up and he would enter imbalanced like a banana. So a lot of the fastest swimmers will use this pike position to enter through one hole in a straight line. Kevin enters the water in a straight line, but once he goes in, he turns into a banana shape, so his hamstrings and calves drag. Michael Phelps actually uses too much pike, so his quads and shins will slap the water and create drag. Ooh, that was Caleb Dressel uses the perfect amount of pike, and this allows his body to enter the water in one hole. How does Dressel jump so far out from the blocks? When he came into college, his vertical leap was 33 inches, which is very good, but it's not outstanding. And now it's 42 inches, which is absolutely insane. And how he did this was through a combination of several different dryland activities that I'll show you in the next couple clips. Most people know about box jumps, and these can be done several times a week to help increase static explosiveness off the blocks. Split jumps are a little less common, but they're a great way to train the starting position for swimming. Shin muscles are important to having a great vertical, and depth jumps will help increase their elasticity. They also will help a lot for turns. When done correctly, high elbow med ball slams can mimic the arm motion on the start almost perfectly and can help increase the power in this way. All right guys, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos like this one.